A quick guide to the old game EGA track, expanding on the tutorial with information from the manual and elsewhere. It's like a text-based game, so in-game, just type the command, then hit enter. Most commands, you don't even need to type the whole thing, it will recognize the first letter for the command. Versions of this game can be found at abandonware sites, or sites that host DOS games to play in browser. Introduction. The goal of the game is to explore an 8x8 grid of space and destroy all Klingons. On the way, you may also fight some Romulans and rescue people. There will be randomly placed bases to help you. This page is mostly fluff from a technical manual and doesn't really apply to this game. Navigation. It tells you again that your max speed is warp 6 and warp 8 in emergencies. This is fluff and has no relation to actual performance. The move command, or just M, will bring up the navigation window. The section of the galaxy you're in is an 8x8 grid of 64 quadrants. And each quadrant is an 8x8 grid of 64 sectors. Forget the way those terms are used in the actual series. To walk to a quadrant with the move command, you type in the coordinates for the quadrant first, and then the sector you want to arrive at. Within a sector, just enter those coordinates on their own. If you remember how to read charts or graphs from school, this game does not do it that way. The chart starts on the top left, and the x-axis comes down on the left, and the y-axis is across on the right. It's just like that in this game. As a detail from the manual, you do not need to add commas between every number. And even more from the manual, you don't even need to open the navigation window at all. Let's say... 3253. And just land somewhere in the sector, let's say somewhere near the middle. So that worked, except, remember, it can't actually travel through an obstacle. So what it says is that navigation was blocked by the object at 5.5. Dock, or D, that is when you are next to a base, you must use this command to get the benefits of that base. You have to travel right next to a star base of any sort before you can initiate docking procedures. While docked, the star base shields make you invulnerable to attack, which is quite helpful when you're trying to save it from a Klingon attack. Star bases offer refuel or recharge, resupply and faster repairs, while the other two base types, not so much. Engineering. You have a MAM converter that generates some power. The manual says this is 400 units a day, which isn't much. Warp to set your warp speed. Let's try it. That did not work. Only W is the command you want. You get a window in which you can tell engineering what warp speed you want. I recommend 4 if you want shields up, I'll explain that later, or 5 with shields down. That's a reasonable speed and doesn't actually use more power than your MAM reactor generates. Another note, instead of opening that window, you can just type W and the warp speed. And as you can see there, that just changed. Energy, or E, brings up the engineering power transfer screen. This screen shows specifically how much power you have, rather than the approximate dials on the screen. If you wish, you can choose to transfer power from one system to another. And for example, three shields to two impulse engines. And it asks you how much to divert. Let's say 500. That said energy loss there, because you have to bear in mind the maximum capacity of one of these systems. If you transfer more power into a system than its maximum capacity, you just lose that power. Repair, or R, is actually just a damage report, probably because D was taken by the dot command. The screen shows the state of all systems and an estimate of repair time whilst undocked and when docked at the starbase. Fix, or F, is the real command to repair the ship. You can choose to cancel this using O to abort. With L, you get the status of all your systems, and you can tell them what system to focus their repairs on. For example, I want my phases. If you don't tell your engineering staff to concentrate repairs on a system, they will repair all damaged systems evenly. This prompt gives you the option to spend time to make repairs whether in space or whilst docked to a starbase. Being docked to a starbase lets you repair twice as fast. 
and this will ask you how much time you want to spend on making the repairs. This is one of the few ways to make time pass whilst not traveling or doing any other actions. Weapons. Torpedoes are deadly and can take out a battleship at close range. You only carry nine, however. They're only reloaded at star bases or supply depots. Phases are your main weapon. You directly use your main power reserves to damage enemy ships, and they can recur at longer distances. Phases, or P, brings up the weapons control window. Your weapons officer will give you the coordinates of all enemy ships one by one, and you have to decide how much power to spend on each target one at a time. Your phases will automatically hit and they can't miss. Your phases will overheat and get less effective the more you use them. Torpedoes, or T. You have three tubes available. That means you can fire up to three torpedoes at once. After choosing the number to fire, then you have to give the target coordinates for each torpedo. Once you hit enter, they will launch and try to hit the targets. They can hit obstacles or miss. The major feature is that these don't need any power to fire. Defense. Traveling at warp with shields up doubles the energy used for that journey. Warp 4 seems an okay balance. The torpedoes are less accurate with shields up, and every time you raise the shields, you use 50 units of main power. So probably better to do it only when you need to. The commands are ship up and ship doom. Or just skip to the end where it says you can just use the arrow keys to do that. These aren't the only two shield related commands as it says here. You can use the command max that dumps as much main power into your shields as possible with just that command and not having to go through the energy transfer screen. Scanners. The ship has short range scanners that show what is in the sector around you. Long range scanners that scan neighboring quadrants. The long range scanners automatically fill your chart of the galaxy. Long or L, skip to the end where it says it's obsolete. All it does is show the sector you're in and those around you that are still on the map. Chart or C is the command to see the full chart of the galaxy if for some reason you use the long range command. Scanner examples. This is what the top left of the game screen looks like. These are examples of every shape of object you can see in game. Different colors mean different things. This is your ship. It will be yellow when your shields are up and gray ones are friendly ships. This is a star. There can be varying numbers of these within the space of a single quadrant. This is a Cleon ship. These comes in various types and will be shown in different colors. This is a Cleon base. This is a Federation base. These all look the same, so you'll have to tell by sensors or communications what type it is. It's not very clear, but this is a circle shape. Any circle shape is generally a planet. They will come in all sorts of colors and patterns. This is a nova, what's left after a star explodes. And this is a phenomenon. Shoot them with your phases if you have energy to spare. Over here, you have a little dashboard with your star date. Always starts at 3500. Your alert status. Basic dials showing how much main power you have and how much shield power you have. The energy screen will always be more informative than these. A warp factor speed indicator. The number of Klingons left before you finish the game. And your photon torpedo inventory. Examples of long range scan or chart readings. First number shows the number of Klingons in that sector. Any presence will highlight the sector red. The middle number indicates the presence and type of a starbase. There are types 1, 2, and 3. The last number is the number of stars in the sector. Travel yellow 9 is when a sector is inaccessible after a supernova has wiped out everything in it. Communications will appear in four panels on the right, of which the bottom one will always be damage report. The A command, with or without number to acknowledge messages, doesn't seem to do anything but clear the messages, so it's pretty useless. Quit, or Q, is simply to quit the current game. Self, or S, opens up the self-destruct menu. You enter your set password, and you'll detonate your ship. Hail just attempts to ask if there is a nearby starbase. I can't imagine using it unless you need to find one and you can't spare the time to search for one. Exploration. Basically, exploring planets can be good. 
You might evacuate a planet in distress for points or find useful items. Orbit or O is the command to orbit a planet. It will have to be directly adjacent to a planet and you will automatically scan the planet for anything interesting. The land command is used to send down an away team to the planets you're orbiting. You can choose to use the transporter or shuttle depending on what's still working and you'll see the RNG outcome. And the use command will show your ship's inventory of any useful items you have found. And that would bring you to the end of the in-game briefing or tutorial. You'll see here that this game can save games. Once in game, you can use the save command and you'll be able to enter a short file name. And that short file name is what you need at this point in order to load a save game. You enter your name and that is just for recording your score. Command level. That just means difficulty level, easiest at 1 and most difficult at 5. Your self-destruct password, you can just leave it blank. And after that, you're in the game. If you need more help or a reminder, you can use the help command or just hit F1. A summary of some of the commands, as well as those that are not mentioned in the tutorial. Ray here fires an RNG death ray in bad situations and can make things a whole lot better or a whole lot worse. SND to turn off or on the sound. MSGS to bring up a message lock. And if you have more messages that can fit in this tiny little screen, they will whiz by very fast. While those messages are scrolling by, you can hit any key to pause and hit any key again to resume. Info is the command to actually scan individual ships in a sector and get more information about them. Position of the enemy ship. Range in sectors. The direction in game terms. And their shield status. This legend over the tutorial shows you the different types of Klingon ships and the different colours that they actually are. And this long range scan reference tells you over the in game tutorial what the different types of starbase are for the different numbers. One, the starbase helps with refueling and recharging, faster repairs, and reloads torpedoes. Two, the research station, they're just there. Three, supply depot. It will reload your torpedoes. I hope this will be enough to help you comfortably play the game. There's a whole lot more not mentioned anywhere, even in the manual. Perhaps if you like and play this game enough, you'll find that out. Or maybe I'll make an ultimate guide. Once you know all the ins and outs, you'll be able to comfortably play at difficulty 5.